In this video, we're going to be replacing the fuel injector in this 2005 Honda Element. We're going to open up our glove box. What I'm going to do is empty the glove box of anything inside. And we're going to locate these two tabs here. It's going to be one on each side. These are going to be your locking tabs to hold your glove box from folding all the way down. We're going to remove these two tabs by reaching around the side and pressing inwards from behind. That'll unlock them. Okay, this is what you're looking at on the passenger side of the glove box. So what we're going to do is reach in behind here, push that tab in. Now lift the glove box slightly and pull that tab out. Okay, once we have these two tabs removed, we can now fold our glove box all the way down. The fuse that we're going to be looking for, or the relay rather, that we're going to be looking for is this blue one here. This is going to be your fuse pump relay. It's the relay on the inside towards the driver's side. We're going to remove that now. What this is going to do is shut off our fuel pump. So on this fuel pump relay, you're going to have two clips. And we're going to pull away from the relay, one on the back side here, one on the front side here. You're going to pry those two clips open and pull your relay up. So we've done that just so we can show you. Here's that forward clip, here's that rearward clip, and here is what the clip retainers look like on the relay. So once you get those two open, Pull your relay up and out. We can go ahead and set our relay straight down. What we're going to do now is start and run our vehicle until it stumbles and it stalls. That means it's out of gas. Now that we've run our vehicle out of fuel, we can take our fuel pump relay, put it back into place, put our glove box back together, which means pulling it back up, take our bumpers, our locks, slide them back in, press to click in, do the same thing on both sides. Now we can go out and work under the hood. Our negative terminal here, 10 millimeter nut. Go ahead and back that off now. And set that aside. So now your battery should stay disconnected the entire time we're working because we put the fuel pump relay back in place. If you reconnect your battery and for whatever reason click your ignition forward, you're going to put fuel back into your fuel line, which is not what you want. So now that that's done, we can take a 10 millimeter socket and remove our engine cover. We have two 10 millimeter bolts, actually sorry, two 10 millimeter capped nuts. You can remove those and your engine cover should come straight off. We can set that aside. Now that we've removed pressure from our fuel line, we're going to go ahead and disconnect our fuel line here so that we can take our fuel rail and move it up so we can get to one of our injectors. Before we do that, we're going to put these two nuts back on their studs here so we don't lose them. Now we can come over here to our fuel line. We're going to remove our cap, just pull straight up and off. We can set that aside. Now before we go any further in removing our fuel line, there's two things we want to do potentially move this hose out of the way so we have a little bit more room to work, but definitely put down some kind of absorbent pad or rag around the area where your fuel line is going to disconnect. You're going to have a little bit of fuel spillage between here 
and your fuel reel. There will be some residual in the line. So be prepared for a little fuel to come out. We have our absorbent pad down. Now we can see we have a blue locking tab. We have one on both sides. We're going to squeeze that tab and pull our line from this side away. So this fuel rail disconnect here, because of the angle of this blue lock, it's being a little bit of a pain. So we're going to get into the bottom with a hook tool, pull that lock in, get in the top here with a small pocket flathead screwdriver, just keep tension on those, and then try and pull this line apart. separate that line. Now remember you have a little bit of fuel left over in this line. So what we're going to do is just tuck this back here and keep it up. Now that that's disconnected we can move forward and remove these two 12 millimeter nuts holding our fuel rail down. We may end up taking this ground off also, which is going to be a 10 millimeter. We're going to start with the two 12s and see where it goes. 12 millimeter here. All right, so now what we should be able to do is take our fuel rail and our injectors up and off at the same time. So remember, we may come back and take this bolt out here. Let's see how much movement we get. Okay, a little bit of movement there. Before we go any further, we're going to come in here with some compressed air, blow out this area, and get it ready to remove our injectors. Now that we have our area blown clean, we can continue to work out our injectors and fuel rail as one assembly. I'm just going to continue to rock it back and forth. So we do have one injector in the middle here that's a little bit tougher to come out. Okay, and there's a little bit of fuel there. And so the injector popped out of the fuel rail. So what we're going to do here is disconnect the electrical connection on that injector. Or actually just see if we can pull that injector out. So now, what we can do is just rotate our whole fuel reel. Don't lose your lock down here. Rotate our whole fuel reel out of the way. We're going to replace this injector here, the one that did not come out. All right, so we're going to try and pull this injector out. Hopefully, we get the gasket and everything to come with it. All right, so here's our O-ring. And there is still And the last piece of our old injector. So now our new injector is going to sit in here like this. Before we do that, we're going to put our injector onto the rail, which means that we're going to push our injector into the rail. There's going to be a tab that's going to seat in. 
sometimes, a little bit of fuel, a little residual fuel. What I like to use here is a little bit of brake clean, just to lube this O-ring slightly. Now push that into place. Once we have that seated, we are going to take our retaining clip, push our injector down, and put our clip on like so. Now we can take our fuel reel and install our injectors again. Just going to use a little bit of brake clean on these O-rings. Going to sit our injectors down into place. Something else we're going to take note of is our our studs for our nuts. Make sure we're aligned there. All right. Once you have your injectors seated, what we can do now make sure that terminal on our new injector is clean. We can plug in the electrical connection on that injector. these for a little extra push. We can put our two 12 millimeter nuts back on to our fuel rail and snug those up. Again, just taking a look, making sure nothing shifted out. Everything looks good. We can move on to reconnecting our fuel line. All right, our fuel line, we're going to put back in to the cable or the hose orientation. What we're gonna do here is make sure that our lock is in the right position and both ends are free and clear of any debris. to align the lock and push to connect. Looks good. Give it a little tug back. Make sure it doesn't come out. And cover it. Okay, so we can now take off our two nuts here and set our engine cover back down. And reinstall our nuts on top. Reconnect our negative terminal and make sure it's down as far as it'll go. And tighten up our nut. Because that's an odd angle, just had a wrench nearby. Because that's an odd angle, had a ratchet nearby just to make sure we're tight. Looks good. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.